Have you ever considered that a massive geopolitical move, one designed specifically to, well, cripple a tech giant, might actually end up forging its independence? It really is the core of the sanction paradox we're looking at today. Back in 2019, you know, U.S. sanctions hit Huawei hard, cut them off from advanced chips, key software, the global supply chains that everything runs on. And the prediction back then was pretty dire, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. Most analysts thought, OK, that's it. Huawei's going to fade away. Technologically speaking, irrelevance seemed inevitable. But here we are five years later, and the story's completely flipped. Huawei isn't just surviving. They seem to be launching a direct challenge to NVIDIA right in the heart of AI dominance. That's right. We're talking about their Ascend processor line, specifically the uh, the Ascend 910B reportedly. It's aimed squarely at NVIDIA's territory. It's pretty astonishing how quickly that seems to have happened. NVIDIA's chips, like the H100, they've basically been the engine for global AI. They really have. And now this 910B is being positioned and it seems adopted, particularly in China, as a viable homegrown alternative. It genuinely threatens to, well, split the global AI hardware market. Okay, so we really need to unpack how Huawei pulled this off. We should dig into their strategy, this vertical integration idea, the technical tricks they use to get around manufacturing limits, and crucially, what this split means for NVIDIA. Yeah. We're talking billions in potential lost revenue, right? Billions, yeah. And it's more than just money. It's signaling a uh, a major shift in how the global tech landscape is organized. It's a real geopolitical realignment. Let's go back to that starting point then. Yeah. 2019, Huawei gets cut off. No advanced US chips, no key software, no access to the most advanced manufacturing. Mm -hmm. How do you possibly go from relying on TSMC and American IP to, well, having a competitive AI chip in just five years. It took an absolutely massive bet, a defiant one, you could say, heavily backed by the state, focused entirely on achieving independence. Think about it, hundreds of thousands of engineers were basically told their work, their path was blocked. So instead of giving up, Exactly. They redirected everything, poured immense resources into their own R&D, specifically targeting this Ascend processor line. They had to build it themselves. But they couldn't physically make the chips themselves, could they? That requires a foundry. Absolutely critical point. That massive engineering push had to be paired with a deep strategic partnership with SMIC. That's Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, China's biggest chip foundry. And the goal wasn't just raw speed. Not entirely, no. The primary goal shifted. It became about ensuring supply, guaranteed supply, independent supply, building a kind of self-contained AI universe that just doesn't need the West's supply chain at all. Which brings us to the performance. We hear reports comparing the Ascend 910B quite favorably to NVIDIA's H100, at least in some tasks. But uh, is that a fair comparison? The H100 is a beast for training huge models. Is the 910B really playing the same game, or is its value more strategic? That's a really important distinction. And yeah, you're right to question a direct apples to apples comparison. The 910B probably doesn't match the absolute peak power of NVIDIA's latest, like the Blackwell architecture, especially for massive parallel training. So the headlines might be a bit misleading. They might miss the real point. The key insight isn't just the raw speed, it's the guarantee of having the chip. It's the technological sovereignty it represents. For a big Chinese cloud company, think Alibaba or Tencent, a domestic chip that's maybe a bit slower, but is always available and likely subsidized, well, that's suddenly way more valuable than a faster foreign chip that could vanish overnight due to sanctions. Okay, so reliability and security trumping peak performance. Makes sense. But technically, how did they even get close? They don't have access to the absolute cutting edge tools, right? Mm. Specifically, those EUV machines, the extreme ultraviolet lithography from ASML in the Netherlands, making modern seven nanometer class chips without those. That sounds almost impossible. It's incredibly difficult. And this is where the story gets really interesting from a technical standpoint. They seem to have taken a different architectural approach with the 910B, perhaps optimizing more for efficiency, lower power use, especially for tasks like running large language models or computer vision, what we often call inference. But the sheer physics of printing tiny circuits, mm -hmm. how do you get around needing EUV? It forces them back to older, much less efficient techniques. The strong rumor, and the evidence seems to support it, is that they achieved the seven nanometer class density using something called multi-patterning with DUV, deep 
ultraviolet lithography. Multi-patterning. Explain that a bit. Sure. Instead of one clean, precise exposure with EUV, you have to expose the silicon wafer multiple times using complex masks and etching steps to gradually build up that tiny pattern. It's way more complex, takes much longer, it's far more expensive, and crucially, getting good yields, meaning chips that actually work, is exponentially harder. So it's like a brute force method, technologically speaking. Mm -hmm. Throwing massive resources at a problem the West solves more elegantly with better tools. That's a good way to put it. They're clearly signaling that cost and time are secondary concerns compared to the strategic goal of self-sufficiency. And their whispers, they're even using their own AI, sort of in-house optimization techniques, just to wrestle usable yields out of these incredibly complex multi-patterning processes, using AI to solve the manufacturing problem created by the lack of other AI-enabling tools. Okay, so the hardware is impressive given the constraints. But as you said, a chip isn't enough. NVIDIA's real dominance, their moat, as people call it, has always been the software CEDA. Decades of development, tools, libraries, a whole generation of researchers trained on it. How does Huawei even begin to challenge that? That is arguably the bigger mountain to climb, and Huawei seems to understand this perfectly. A chip without a thriving software ecosystem around it. It's just silicon. CUDA gives NVIDIA this huge sticky advantage. Developers know it. The tools are mature. The libraries are optimized. Replicating that is incredibly tough. And this is where their platform, MindPore, fits in. Precisely. Huawei is essentially trying to mirror the CUDA strategy, but within China's borders. MindPore is their answer. It's an AI framework like TensorFlow or PyTorch, but it's built from the ground up to run best, most efficiently, on their Ascend processors. So they're building the whole stack. The whole stack. Tightly integrated hardware, software, and cloud services. It's vertical integration pushed to its logical extreme in this context. You hear this term AI factories associated with them. What does that actually mean? Is it just marketing? It sounds like marketing, but it represents a very real uh, bundled offering. They're essentially selling a complete turnkey AI infrastructure solution. It bundles the Ascend chips, their own proprietary high-speed interconnects to link them, integrates seamlessly with Huawei Cloud, and includes software layers designed to optimize the training of really massive AI models efficiently. So it's like an AI nation in a box kind of concept. That's a great way to think about it. A fully integrated, self-sufficient system designed explicitly to avoid any choke points related to U.S. technology or potential sanctions. The long-term danger here for the established players seems enormous. If they open source MindPoor, optimize it for Chinese developers, maybe even mandate its use in education, you could cultivate a whole generation of AI talent that simply never touches the NVIDIA ecosystem. It's like flipping the script on institutional inertia. And the Chinese government seems to be actively pushing this. There are reports of significant subsidies, incentives for state-owned companies, universities, research labs to adopt this domestic hardware and software. That guarantees Huawei a massive home market, which further solidifies Ascend and MindPoor as the de facto standard within China. Let's talk about the global fallout then. Yeah. NVIDIA used to make a significant chunk of its money selling to Chinese data centers, right? Something like 20, 25% of their data center revenue. Yeah, it was a huge market for them. And when the US restrictions tightened, especially in the high-end AI chips, that revenue stream basically got shut off. It left this multi-billion dollar vacuum in the Chinese market. A vacuum that Huawei seems perfectly positioned to fill. Exactly. And you see the big Chinese cloud players, Alibaba Cloud, Baidu, Tencent, they were desperate for high-end AI compute. Now, reports suggest they're actively testing and deploying these Ascend processors. They're acting rationally, prioritizing guaranteed supply, even if it means slightly different performance characteristics compared to the NVIDIA chips they might have preferred otherwise. And this isn't just staying within China, is it? We're seeing signs this split is going global. That's right. The fragmentation is spreading. You're seeing nations, particularly in regions like the Middle East, parts of Africa, Southeast Asia, starting to explore partnerships with Huawei for their AI infrastructure. Why would they choose Huawei over, say, NVIDIA if performance is still potentially higher with NVIDIA? Several reasons. Cost might be one factor, but perhaps more importantly, it's about avoiding dependence on U.S. technology and frankly, U.S. foreign policy whims. If you build your nation's critical AI infrastructure on NVIDIA, you're always potentially vulnerable to future export controls, restrictions, maybe even geopolitical pressure. Whereas choosing the Huawei ecosystem offers autonomy. Exactly. Technological autonomy and supply chain stability. It removes that layer of geopolitical risk associated with relying solely on the Western tech stack. So this really paints the picture of that bifurcation we mentioned. 
The global AI landscape seems to be actively splitting. You've got one sphere centered around NVIDIA and the Western ecosystem. And another sphere rapidly coalescing around Huawei's technology, built on this principle of self-reliance and vertical integration spurred on by sanctions. It feels like it's moved beyond just business competition. I think it has. It's becoming almost an ideological contest now. It's not just about who builds the fastest chip anymore. It's a competition between the Western model of, let's say, relatively open innovation and globally integrated supply chains versus a model of state-directed, controlled technological sovereignty. And that divide is going to shape everything from economic growth to data privacy rules globally. Okay, so let's try and summarize where things stand. NVIDIA. Still, the clear leader in terms of raw, cutting-edge performance, especially with things like their new Blackwell chips coming online, and they still have that incredibly powerful software mode with CUDA. Undeniably. But then you have Huawei, almost forged in the fire of these sanctions, they've built this incredibly resilient, self-sufficient ecosystem powered by massive state support. What looked like a defensive survival play has turned into a pretty aggressive global strategy. It's forcing others to make choices. And we know from history, technological dominance is rarely permanent. Never permanent. It looks like the future of AI isn't going to be dominated by just one player or one region. We're entering a split world scenario, multiple AI empires rising in parallel, and that creates a much more complex reality for everyone, policymakers, engineers, investors to navigate. The old rules don't seem to apply anymore. It's not winner take all. Not necessarily, no. It's a much more fragmented game now. So thinking about this new reality, this drive for technological self-reliance may be forced upon some. Here's something to think about. How will this intense need for autonomy in AI affect how critical technologies are developed and deployed around the world. I'm thinking specifically about things like autonomous vehicles or smart cities, where you absolutely cannot tolerate supply chain disruptions or external control. The implications seem to stretch far